This video is going to be about the Canopus ADVC110. I'll make references to the Black Magic Design Intensity Shuttle, and I will also make references to this cheap USB video capture device. A lot of people have been using the Canopus ADVC110 to capture video. It can be used to capture Hi8 tapes as well as VHS tapes, and it does a really good job at it. But that's not why people bought this particular product back in 2003 or even in 2008. A lot of people purchased this product so that they could do timeline playback using Final Cut Pro, the Edia software, Premiere Pro. If we look at the Canopus ADVC 110, in the back you have the outputs, in the front you have the inputs, which makes sense because if it's on your computer desk, You'd want to be able to hook cameras and camcorders into the front rather than into the back. I'm going to play back the timeline really quick. And I know some of you are thinking, well, the Canopus ADVC 110 isn't actually hooked up. That's correct because I wanted to show the Canopus ADVC 110 when I did this video. I'm actually using my USB intensity shuttle. This is the Thunderbolt version. If I hit you know, the space bar with Premiere Pro, what you're seeing using the Intensity Shuttle is the exact same thing that would happen if I was using the ADVC 110. I could use the Edia software, I could use Premiere Pro version one. And it, what you see on the CRT monitor looks really silky smooth. What you used to see on the computer monitor back in 1998 or even in 2003, it just really didn't look all that great. And I wanna make mention that when you're using third-party hardware with Premiere Pro, what you see on the computer screen looks awful. If you wanna make it look good on the computer monitor, all you have to do, I've got keyboard shortcuts, just disable the Mercury playback engine. Now what I see on the computer screen is really crisp and clean. I'm demonstrating what the computer screen looks like when you're using third-party hardware with Premiere Pro. I'm sure most people would say it looks kind of crappy. I don't consider this a bug because if you're using third-party hardware, you should be looking at the broadcast compliant hardware, not your computer screen. But if I disable the Mercury transmit, you can see that the image quality of interlaced video looks fantastic on the computer screen. That wasn't the case in 1998 or 2003. If I wanna supersize this, I can, and now I get a really big image. And believe it or not, this image is gonna look just as good as my CRT monitor. And if I make it full screen, what I see right there looks pretty much as good as what I see on the CRT monitor. Now I'm gonna go back to how I had it and I'm going to redo the Mercury transmit. What you see on this monitor is not going to look as good as what you see on the computer monitor when the Mercury transmit is turned off. The reason being is what you're gonna see if you're using the Canopus ADVC 110 or the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle and you're doing standard definition, it would be no different than hooking up a VCR or a Hi8 camcorder into the high definition TV. As everyone knows, that's not gonna be a really good image. It's gonna look kind of ganky but when you're playing it on the computer screen, if I get rid of the Mercury transmit, it looks really super crisp, clean. Everything is just super detailed. The motion paths are really silky smooth. And that's because it's your operating system, your graphics card, or all your hardware in general, along with your nonlinear editing system, playing it back as good as it possibly can, as opposed to just sticking a high eight camera into your HD TV or VHS deck into your TV. Any nonlinear editing software program that could make use of a DV camcorder could pretty much use that DV camcorder to record, plus also play back the timeline of Final Cut Pro 3, Final Cut Pro 5, the Edia software. I had the Pinnacle Pro 1, the Canopus TV Storm, and the Matrox RT2000. They were nice capture cards, but the problem with using those, you would have plugins. You'd have to use their plugins 
to tap in the real to the real-time performance of those video capture cards. And if you did have the Canopus DV Storm or the Matrox RT2000, those required you to use sequences or timelines, whichever you wanted to call it, that were designed specifically for the Canopus product or the Matrox product. Firewire devices really didn't need you to do that. Another really cool feature about the Firewire DV converters is that you could use them with a laptop where the Canopus DV Storm and the Matrox RT2000 required you to have a desktop computer. You could go external and buy one device and you could use it on your laptop and you could also use it on your desktop. It was hard to play back DV Kodak, the mini DV25 Kodak back in 1998 and even in 2003 on a regular computer. Those real-time capture cards were helpful for that. With the ADVC 110 and a dual Xeon system back in 2003, you could do a picture picture. Both video layers could have color correction and you could even put on a lower third. And people said it looked just as good as using Edius with the Canopus DV Storm. There was really no reason why you needed to have those real-time capture cards because you'd be better off just buying instead of buying an $1,100 computer, buy like a $2,200 computer, get a dual Xeon system, you know, put an extra thousand dollars towards a dual Xeon system, as opposed to putting, you know, $1,200 or $1,400 for those real-time capture cards from Matrox, Pinnacle, and Canopus. And like everybody said, your audio editing software, your 3D animation software, everything gets a nice real-time performance boost. And some of those capture cards only had real-time performance when using certain video codecs. So it was kind of cool to be able to edit DV footage using the Canopus ADVC 110. And like some people had stated, imagine where the CPUs will be in another two or three years from now. You could pick up these Firewire DV converters for anywhere from about $120 to about right around 250, maybe 300 for the more expensive ones that had RCA and S video. Now they did have some that had B and C connectors and also XLR connectors, but those were designed to be hooked up to like the Betacam decks, not a Betamax deck, but a Betacam deck and three quarter inch deck. Canopus made a lot of really high end DV converters. Let me hit the Alt T, that's what the keyboard shortcut for me is. Now this is a high definition timeline and it will be able to play this back. On here we see the letterbox, but on there it's got the letterbox and pillar box. If you are using high definition though, you could make it take up the whole screen though. You could do this with the ADVC 110 as well. And your TVs can be set up to make use of the full screen. You could even output 4K and 6K, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be standard definition with Rec 601 color space. So you'd be better off getting something like the Black Magic Design Intensity Shuttle if you were going to be editing high definition. But one thing that was really cool about the Canopus ADVC 110 and other Firewire based DV converters is that they didn't require drivers. You just were plug and play with these, just like plugging in a mini DV camcorder. Whether you had Final Cut Pro or the Edia software, it'll detect it. And like I said, the camcorders, you could use those to output, you know, your timelines and sequences from Final Cut Pro, Edius, Sony Vegas, and Premiere, just like you could the Canopus ADVC 110. But if you had a really good camcorder that costed $2,800 or $4,800, you'd be better off picking up one of these devices for real inexpensive so that you can be out on the field, you know, with your $4,800 mini DV camcorder. I should mention when you use these cheap, USB video capture devices, it doesn't really matter what brand. A lot of times you're gonna get drop frames. If you don't get drop frames, you might notice that the video codec that it captures in, you can't import it to Final Cut Pro, iMovie, or Premiere Pro. It'll only work with the software that it came with. The drivers can be really funky with these cheap USB video capture devices. With the ADVC 110, you could capture the video with Sony Vegas, and after you capture it, you could play it back on broadcast compliant hardware, 
and realize that the basketball that looked orange still looks orange. It's not shifting the colors where the basketball looks red. Premiere Pro no longer supports video capture at all. It can't even use the Blackmagic design to capture video. And it doesn't support these DV devices for output anymore. 